April 2011, summer's come early, a time for looking at brewery, looking at pubs and talking about proper beer. And we've come to a very special brewery. This is the newest brewery in the United Kingdom. We're at Moore Houses in Burnley. Here we are in this brand spanking new brew house of Moorehouses Brewery and I'm joined by David Grant, MD. Hello David. Hi Peter, nice good, to see good you. Good to see you. Huge investment, beautiful investment. I'm jealous, I don't mind admitting. <laughs> good investment? It's, it's got to be. It's a four and a half million pound investment. We're extremely proud of what we've achieved here. Uh, the quality of the beer is, is spectacular. And just after 13 weeks of brewing on this new plant, we very fortunately were awarded with a, a gold medal at the International Brewing Awards. I don't want to make you feel any more envious. You're just winding me up again, aren't you, David? Well, well done. Sorry about that, but you know, Black Cat 3.8, the best cascale in the, in the world at 3.8, isn't bad on a plant that's only been brewing for 13 weeks. And this is a big plant, you know, it's, we make no bones about that. This can produce a thousand barrels of beer a week it could produce about 1,600 barrels of beer a week if we really needed to push it. But you know, we don't need to do that at the moment. We're brewing 320 barrels of beer. 10 years ago, we were only brewing 35 barrels of beer. So we've made or created this place mm. for not tomorrow or the day after, but 10 years time, 20 years time, and hopefully in another 145 years time, we'll be extending the brewery once again. David, I've seen you've gone for bulk malt deliveries. Uh, particular reasons and what barley are you using? There, there is a particular reason for it. One of them is that we, we contract in for three years out. Right. So, and we know the growers that produce our wonderful Marisotta uh, pale malt. Lovely stuff, um, isn't it? Which is in these bins here. And once the malt leaves these bins, uh, it goes up through chains and buckets uh, to the top of the brewery and then comes through a, a, a weigher and a metal detector and through a mill right. to crack open the husk. We then um, pass the malt through uh, an intake for, for salts to uh, Burnley eyes the, uh, Burnley eyes the water. The water yes. And then the malt goes right They're back very up traditional to the, up north, you know. <laughs> the, the malt goes right up to the top of the brewery again and then sits in the grist case till we're ready to eat it. This is our grist case now that's full of uh, that wonderful malt. Um, the grist falls through the grist case into a steel smasher which is uh, uh, an Archimedes screw. It's saturated with water so that every grain gets completely soaked and then falls into this vessel here which is a mash tun. Um, as the malt arrives in the mash tun it's steeped in, in boiling water uh, and we agitate that as well as an agitator in there to mix it all together and we extract all the starches and the sugars from that wonderful malt that's in there. Our new 100 barrel copper, a wonderful beast is this, and 99.99% of it is stainless steel. I know about this bit. <laughs> we are traditional brewers. When we first started brewing 145 years ago, we brewed in a copper, copper. This is stainless steel, and there is a difference. So what we put in here is some plumber's copper piping, just to give it that authenticity that we believe it needs. I'll believe you though. Tell yeah. me about the hops, because this is where the hops come in. This is where the hops come in. We use fantastic English hops. Uh, these are Fuggle hops. Uh, this year from, uh, from Kent rather than Hereford. Really? Uh, they are. And these, this is what gives the beer its fantastic nose and also the bitterness. Yes. And it's absolutely fantastic. This traditional copper doesn't have a, a, a steam coil in it. Right. What we use in here to, to boil the wort or the hot wort is an external work boiler. So we have a, um, a boiler on the outside of this right. copper and the, the hot wort um, circulates between the yeah. copper and it also aerates the, the wort as well and gives us fantastic quality beer. I've seen it in action, it's superb. So having boiled it up in the copper over there, uh, and then you obviously have to cool it down. Through a hot back, take the hops out. Yes, yeah, through the hot, hot back. And then para flows then to... Para flows to cool it to about 20, 20 degrees Celsius. 20 degrees. 
and into one of these lovely fermentation vessels? One of 12 fermentation vessels. 12? Um, 12, um, of which we've got 800 barrel vessels, of which this yeah. is one, and then we've got 450 barrel vessels as well. And this really is where all the magic happens, where you turn that hot work into alcohol by introducing our wonderful single cell yeast organism, which does a fantastic job by turning sugar to alcohol. When they told me we were coming north for the next video beer blog, I thought, fantastic, I'm from Yorkshire, Yorkshire beer is the best beer in the world, and some of the best pubs I've ever been to have been in Yorkshire. And they said, well, we're not going to Yorkshire, we're going to Lancashire. And I thought, well, Lancashire doesn't have any good beer and they don't know how to do pubs. You really shouldn't say things like that, because if you do, then people want to prove you wrong and they want to do it in style, and they bring you to a really, really fantastic beer pub. This is the Bridge Beer House, in the centre of Burnley, uh, and it just looks amazing. So, um, can I try a half of one of your Lancastrian beers, please? Now, once upon a time, Britain was made up of a patchwork of regional family brewers who also had quite a small area, owned maybe 100 pubs, supplied their beer to those pubs. And in the 50s and 60s, they were all taken over, formed into big conglomerates and national and now international uh, brewing mega companies. There's one part of the country though, this part, where that hasn't really happened and there's still a, a big uh, number of family brewers that go back over a century or more. Uh, one of those is Hyde's uh, in the middle of Manchester and uh, I'm going to be trying their, uh, their best bitter, 3.7%. Uh, it's a bit paler than we might expect uh, a bitter to be down south. Uh, there's a fashion up here for, for beers being uh, kind of lighter and more golden. Uh, it's got a nice tight creamy head thanks to the sparkler. Uh, as a northerner I would say that's the way beer should properly be served, but uh, that does tend to start in a, a second civil war. And as you expect from the colour, not a huge amount of malty character, but definitely some juiciness and, and a kind of nice light digestive bitterness. Uh, finished off, balanced really nicely with uh, just a nice dry hop finish and just a little bit of, of citrusiness. It's one of these beers which, uh, if you come across a lager drinker who says, oh, I don't like ale, I don't like beer, this is the beer for them really because it's, uh, it's light, it's refreshing, served beautifully cool, really nice drink. This is a Moorhouses beer. Uh, it's their lightest, uh, lowest ABV beer. It's 3.7%. It's called Premier Bitter. Interestingly, although it's the lightest beer and the lowest in strength beer, it's their most awarded beer. It's won three medals at the Brewing International Awards. So let's see why. So that is just as pale and cool as the, the first beer was, as the Hyde's beer, but it's actually got more body to it. It's kind of lemony, uh, a really nice fruit character. There's a lot of beers being brewed at the moment with American hops that have a very pronounced assertive citrusy character. This doesn't, it's not over the top like that, but it's kind of within the, within the overall context of the beer, really refreshing, really citrusy, um, and just incredibly drinkable. I'm glad it's only 3.7, 3.8% because it's one of those beers that you could kind of drink the first pint of without noticing and be two or three pints down before you noticed um, what you were doing really. So uh, I'm glad I've just got a half because uh, it just goes down too easily. I've seen a growing trend in the last couple of years of what I call craft beer pubs. That's pubs that really focus on beer. Not just the real ales, although they're the centre of it, but every beer on the bar being well chosen, so good imports and, and nice bottled beers and so on. People said, yeah, fair enough, that's good in cities where you've got a big population, but it can't really work in the provinces. Well, this place proves them wrong. We're in the middle of Burnley, and this beer selection is one of the broadest and most thoughtfully chosen selections of beer I've seen in a pub for a, for a long time, in any pub. Uh, there have been 2,600 real ales served here in the last few years. One of the latest of these, Jouster, I'm enjoying very much. This is an import all the way from, from Gloucestershire. A great example of, uh, another great example of a good British session bitter. Now there's been a lot of talk recently about uh, pubs closing down. 25 pubs are closing for good every week. Uh, and that's due to a combination of supermarket pricing, of uh, the practices of big pub companies, and the smoking ban, and all these different things. Now I'm not 
trying to write those off. But basically, what a place like this shows is that there's still a future for the pub. I guess what's undeniable is that it is harder to run a good pub these days than it used to be. You can't just do it as a hobby. You need to be a genuinely talented entrepreneur. You need to be very good with people. And you need a real passion for keeping and serving good quality beer. Now, what Emma and Simon have proven here at the Bridge Beer House is that they have all those things. This is a great beer pub. It's also a great community pub. There's a blues festival here over the weekend. Uh, there's events all the time. There's trips to breweries. Uh, it's a popular pub with the home crowd when there's a Burnley game on. So it's a great beer pub and a great community pub. And if you can combine both those two attributes, there's just as much future for the pub as there ever was. Every month from now on, we're going to be looking at a different beer style. And there's only one way to kick it off, and that's with Best Bitter, because that really is the kind of epitome of, of British cask ale. It's a style that goes back to the late 19th century. It emerged from this big, strong India Pale Ales, when taxation and changing fashion basically called for a beer that was lighter in alcoholic strength. And when the rest of the world was getting really into lager, we got into bitter. The reasons for that, one, I don't think there's any other beer style in the world that has this kind of depth of flavour and complexity of flavour at such a low ABV, typically between 3.7 and 4.1%. And secondly, that flavour is all about balance. It's kind of the best bits of beer all rolled into one. So a typical bitter, you'll be expecting to get some nice, rich, malty flavours, you know, red fruit, uh, maybe some nuttiness. And then tempered and finished off by a hoppiness which, is, which completes the beer but doesn't overpower the maltiness. As I say, it hangs in perfect balance. Gives you a nice, drying, long bit of finish, perhaps a little bit of citrusiness. It's a style that gets much maligned. I think for uh, people who are suspicious about ale, it sums up the kind of flat cap and old man image. For the new generation of beer geeks, it gets dismissed as boring brown bitter because, it's, because it is so balanced and, and, and delicate. But really, on its day, there is not another beer in the world that can give you this much satisfaction, this much flavour at such a low ABV. Well, Mr Yorkshireman, we've dragged you over the county. I will admit, and it pains me to do this, but I will admit that Lancashire has some excellent breweries brewing fantastic beer that's being served in really, really nice pubs. Yeah, that, that, that Moorhouse's brewery is something else. Is. That's a huge investment for that brewery, um, and it reflects an, a, a trust in the future. The downside of it, of course, they're slightly hit by the chancellor. They want slightly hit, but it's nonsense. For every pound's worth of beer that Moorhouse's sell, 44 pence goes straight to the chancellor. On top of that, the other 56 pence have got to pay their wages, their raw materials, all the utilities and everything else, and corporation tax. Hideously taxed. The, the tax burden on uh, brewers, all brewers, increased by 7.2% in the last budget. Uh, that brings the total increase in the last two and a half years to 38%. Uh, it's just absolutely crazy. And what makes it even crazier is that the government's not even making any more money off it because of the reduction in demand. The only answer is write to your MP. Tell your MPs they need to be told their policies are closing pubs, affecting British brewers this core British industry employing hundreds of thousands of people in pubs, breweries, farmers, hop growers, you name it, supply industries, all those people. It's an enormous industry and the government is killing off the goose which is laying the golden egg. They've taken it too far. Tell your MP. I know that's a bit of a down note. I don't want to finish on that. So what are we doing next, please? Go to Scotland next month. And Scotland, out of any part of Great Britain, uh, has got the biggest increase in Cascale at the moment. It's going up double-digit growth every year, so there's going to be some amazing beers for us to try up there. Great stuff. Definitely. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.